வணக்கம் வெல்கம் டு திஸ் வீடியோ ஆன் பயோமெக்கானிக்ஸ் வி ஹவ் பின் லுக்கிங் அட் ஸ்கெலட்டல் மசில்ஸ் இந்த ப்ரீவியஸ் வீடியோ வி சா ஹவ் ஃபோர்ஸ் இஸ் டெவலப்டு இன் அ சார்கோமியர் ஆர் த ஸ்லைடிங் ஃபிலமெண்ட் தியரி அந்த கிராஸ் பிரிட்ஜ் தியரி வி எக்ஸ்பிளைன் ஹவ் ஃபோர்ஸ் இஸ் டெவலப்டு இன் த ஸ்மாலஸ்ட் ஃபங்க்ஷனல் யூனிட் ஆஃப் த மசில் த ஸ்மாலஸ்ட் ஃபங்க்ஷனல் யூனிட் ஆஃப் த மசில் இஸ் சார்கோமியர் and we said that cross bridges between the thick myosin fibers and the thin actin filaments are formed in the presence of calcium and atp and the myosin then undergoes a conformational change and pulls the actin we saw that reminding you one more time in this video we'll be looking at force length relationship the relationship between length not of the sarcomere in this case we are interested in length of a muscle and force developed by a muscle so in the previous videos we have seen this this is the sarcomere there are these myosin heads that are marked by these red circles that i am marking by these red circles these are attaching to the active sites or the binding sites on actin and then they undergo a conformational change and pull on the actin filament thus causing a minuscule amount of contraction the two z discs move closer to each other in that direction eventually reducing the distance between the two z discs are causing a contraction this is what we saw and we saw how this is happening because uh, myosin attaches to actin and then the third phosphate bond of atp is broken and this energy is then utilized by myosin to undergo a conformational change and pull on the actin filament causing this contraction we said that immediately after it cannot undergo another pull because of that initially it is in a low energy state and then it unbinds and then atp is then hydrolyzed and then myosin goes back to a high energy state called cocking of the myosin head then again the next cycle begins this is how it happens and because of this reason we said that in each sarcomere there will be a small amount of contraction that will be developed and a small amount of force that will be produced okay now a question is for the whole muscle itself what is the relationship between force developed and muscle length because by this logic if i would like to by the logic where we discussed previously if i wanted to develop more force that means i will have to keep on shortening the muscle or in other words there is a monotonic relationship between muscle length and force not necessarily positively correlated or in other words my expectation based on the previous discussion of the sarcomere is that if the sarcomere contracts force is developed so that means as the length of the sarcomere or muscle is essentially composed of a lot of sarcomeres right so as the length of the sarcomere keeps on reducing force keeps on increasing is it not something like this i can expect something like this not necessarily linear okay fine something like this is what you can expect that is this is force this is length but uh, this is not observed in practice this is not observed in reality what is observed in reality is something like this as shown in this plot that means it seems like there is an optimal length at which i am going to have maximum force that is that length at that length i am going to have maximum force produced at lengths above this length force is going to be reduced 
at length below this length force is going to be reduced. How is this happening? Let us try and understand this mechanism by which uh, force and length are related. Now, let us start by analyzing what happens at the highest length. When the sarcomere is at its longest, what happens is here the blue lines show the actin filaments are the thin filaments. The pink lines show the thick or the myosin filaments. When the muscle is stretched, when the muscle length is great, when the muscle length is very high, what happens is that the distance between the two Z discs this is one z disc. So, the state of the sarcomere in each of this in some of these discrete points on this plot are shown in these diagrams. So, the distance between these two z discs is so high that there is very little overlap between myosin heads and actin binding sites. Because actin is suspended from the z disc whereas, myosin is suspended through titin from the z disc and because already the z disc is far apart there is a very small number of myosin heads that can attach to actin. Whatever number of myosin heads that can attach to actin attaches and then they pull and because of this reason at very high lengths because there is very little or a very small amount of overlap between the myosin heads and actin the force developed is relatively small that is this point force is very small at very high lengths ok fine that makes sense. Um, then what happens if you reduce the length the length is slightly reduced then the overlap between the myosin heads and the actin is relatively high. Because of this reason what you see is that at this point all these myosin heads will be in a position to attach to actin binding sites and pull. This is the reason you have high forces. Same reason here, same reason here you are going to have relatively high forces in these regions because there is maximum overlap like I am having these two points and if I have to connect here there is very little overlap, but between these two hands there is a great amount of overlap that you see. And this overlap is what leads to a situation in which uh, the myosin heads are all are a maximum number of myosin heads can attach to actin binding sites and then pull. This causes a very high amount of force or the maximum force that is produced. This length at which this happens is the so called optimal length for the muscle that is the optimal length. This is the length at which the force is maximum. So, essentially in summary as the amount of overlap between the myosin heads and the actin binding sites increases the force produced increases that makes sense. Right? So, as this amount of overlap reduces or as the muscle length keeps on increasing there is very little overlap between myosin heads and actin binding sites. So, force will be small. However, the question is why is the force small in this point? Here there is still a large amount of overlap between uh, the myosin heads and actin binding sites. Why is the force small? Because it turns out as you can see actin keeps coming closer and closer as the muscle length reduces. At this point the two actin filaments suspended on the two Z discs are almost touching each other. At this point what happens 
is actin filaments are overlapping with each other that a large number of uh, cross bridges cannot be formed because actin filaments start overlapping with each other. So, only a finite number of uh, myosin heads can attach and these myosin heads will not be in a position to attach. It is because of this reason the forces developed is relatively small at very low lengths. This is the reason you are going to have this non monotonic force length relationship. This is the active force that is produced. What is the difference? Active force is that force that is produced by the muscle through a neural command. Whenever a neuron gives the command, the force produced in the muscle is the active force that is developed. This is the non monotonic relationship between force and length for the active muscle. But then what you also have is the passive property of the muscle. Note that the muscle also has contractile materials like this rubber band. You are having this rubber band and uh, I am stretching this rubber band. Right? When I am stretching, I am applying a force. Right? When the length when so this rubber band has a resting length right as i keep stretching the rubber band starts resisting the stretch with a force and we know that this force is perhaps proportional to the length right? something similar is what you see here right? the blue line is the passive response. So, as the length increases after some point, the muscle starts resisting stretch. This is due to passive properties or contractile properties that the muscle has. The net force that is developed is the sum of the active force and the passive force, that is, the sum of the brown curve and the blue curve. So, at each point when these two are added you get the total force that is developed. So, at any point in time when we measure what you are measuring is the total force, but of course, at relatively low lengths the passive force does not play a major role. At relatively low lengths it is the active force that is dominating the total force, whereas as the length increases the passive force starts increasing. In fact, at some point it even crosses at this point for example, it crosses the active force. So, with this we come to the end of this video. In this video we saw the relationship between force and length. Critically important to remember that at low lengths of the sarcomere forces are low because the thin filaments, actin filaments start overlapping with each other. Everything else follows logic, but this particular point where at low sarcomere lengths why is the force small because the actin filaments are overlapping with each other. Remember this. Thank you very much for your attention.